Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. Um, well, Nika asked me to uh, to have a short interview on uh, my experience uh, in uh, DM25 and uh, how we are organized. Uh, first, uh, uh, I, I'd like to introduce myself, which is always difficult for me. Uh, I hate definitions and I'm very, uh, have a bad time uh, and hard time when it's uh, about me <laughs> defining, defining me. But uh, so my background is uh, uh, I was part of the Pantera movement. This tells my age in uh, the 19th uh, in the university, Italian university. And uh, then uh, of the um, social forum of uh, my town, Bologna. And uh, there are some uh, interesting things to note about it, uh, about decision making uh, in uh, social forums. And uh, then uh, of the uh, nonviolent uh, peace movement, uh, all, uh, still back in the 90s. And uh, I'm a member of uh, Coalizione Civica here, that is a municipal list uh, uh, in, uh, in the city council of Bologna and uh, of uh, DM25. My engagement uh, in DM25 started from the beginning of the movement. And uh, uh, since um, summer 2019, I'm a member of the uh, coordinating collective uh, that is uh, a group of uh, 12 members uh, that uh, coordinates everything uh, in DiEM25. Um, about how DiEM is organized, um, DiEM started, uh, uh, was started by Yanis Varoufakis and a group uh, of uh, comrades uh, that set the structure of the movement uh, in uh, 2015, uh, 2016, and then uh, officially launched uh, in uh, 2016. Um, the structure is aimed uh, to uh, two goals, uh, two main goals, to have uh, a um, very democratic movement uh, founded on uh, di direct democracy and uh, at the same time uh, to have uh, a unitarian movement because uh, our aim is to have uh, a political organization uh, with a comprehensive uh, vision for all Europe and uh, a co coherent vision. So our uh, main effort uh, is uh, to avoid having a uh, DM25 Spain, uh, DM25 Hungary, and uh, uh, so on, so on. But um, we try to have uh, the same vision, the same politics all over Europe. And uh, uh, this effort to get unity um, is expressed also in the way we try to practice uh, direct democracy that is uh, our uh, most important uh, form of uh, decision making is all member votes. Um, every new poli policy must be approved uh, through an uh, all member vote, which means uh, even uh, if it's about uh, um, starting uh, uh, saying something about uh, uh, mi migrants uh, in uh, Italy. If we didn't have uh, uh, a policy about uh, migration, uh, we should have uh, an all member vote uh, to establish uh, what we say in Italy about migrants. And uh, everybody from uh, uh, Ireland uh, to Greece uh, or to, to, to Turkey, should uh, vote uh, if they feel uh, they are interested uh, in it. S this is the way we voted for the statutes uh, of the um, German electoral wing. Uh, what is an electoral wing is another chapter for later. 
And uh, uh, this is the way we decide everything. Um, the second most important uh, board for decision, for decision making uh, is uh, the validating council that is a, a group of uh, 100 uh, members uh, select randomly selected um, that uh, is supposed to decide when uh, something uh, needs uh, a short decision and um, cannot be cannot pass through an all member vote that is a longer um, instrument that requires at least uh, two months uh, uh, between uh, starting it, having people discussing, uh, and then uh, the actual vote uh, that is two weeks uh, long. Um, the electoral wings are uh, uh, another important part of our movement. Um, it was a uh, uh, discussed in 2017. Uh, it was a very hard discussion and uh, many members uh, left after this uh, all member vote that established the, the electoral wings. Uh, the idea behind is uh, um, we want to be a movement and to uh, do everything a movement does uh, that is uh, uh, actual politics, uh, but uh, um, we don't uh, we don't think that elections and representative uh, democracy is uh, uh, something you can uh, um, avoid. Um, we think uh, the the way to push for our uh, political agenda uh, must. Uh, uh, be also uh, elections uh, whenever it's uh, um, whenever we deem it useful. So uh, those comrades that are interested in uh, electoral elections can form an uh, uh, electoral wing uh, that is a, a sub um, subgroup of the movement that deals uh, with uh, elections. Um, it is through electoral wings uh, that we uh, run uh, in uh, European elections in 2019. Um, in uh, Greece uh, and uh, in Germany, uh, we run uh, directly with our electoral wings. In Germany as allied uh, with uh, another small party that is a uh, democracy in Bewegung. Um, in other countries, we were allied with the uh, local uh, national parties. Um, in my personal opinion, uh, this uh, experiment of uh, the electoral wings uh, is something we should rediscuss, uh, not just uh, uh, as for the organization of the thing, but uh, about the kind of politics uh, you make when uh, you are actually are a party since you run in elections, because this is very different. Uh, yes, uh, Nika. Yes, I just wanted to clarify. That's mean uh, them 25 and uh, the political arena as a, as a as a body to be elected. Yeah, I remember we, David and I was talking to B4, who was proposed to run as a candidate, but he was talking about, yeah, I didn't realize uh, back then that uh, Dem25 is not a party, but it's a kind of recommended the members looks like to be part of the political bodies of the other parties. Yeah, like you were saying in Germany and somewhere, yeah. So basically you just say, you say, okay, we are the movements, but this is a bunch of people who can run and infiltrate the regular political structures, yeah? And yeah. we kind of uh, collaborate with other yeah. political bodies, am I right? Uh, no, um, actually infiltrate other political structures 
uh, would be another kind of a choice. Mm. Uh, and it was the pure movement uh, of uh, the first uh, year. Uh, no, um, DM is a movement, but uh, a part of this mo movement, of this, this movement members can form a party mm. um, whenever, and uh, it's uh, strongly encouraged to form a party. Um, this party um, is a, a mixed thing because uh, it must be under the national law of mm. the uh, country. Uh, we our uh, European law doesn't allow to have an European party like uh, we would like to be. Uh, but on the same time, uh, uh, we want uh, um, this uh, national party to be just a branch of uh, the whole uh, movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, even the national party uh, is supposed to be a branch of the uh, a part, not the whole movement. So there is DM and uh, a part of DMS uh, that form uh, a party to run in elections, mm -hmm. while the others uh, are free to uh, not to join the party. Or uh, so you must be a member of DM to be part of the of a DM party. Sorry for the um, for the play, um, but uh, you can be a DM member without being a, a member of the party. Uh, it's very complicated. Nobody understands it, even inside DM. And uh, actually, the result uh, is uh, uh, that nobody understands it. Uh, one uh, uh, liability during uh, German elections uh, uh, told me some uh, German comrade was exactly that they um, campaigned for uh, uh, for elections for DiEM, and then uh, when uh, people said, uh, oh, "Okay, I'm interested. Uh, I I think I shall vote you," they had to say, "But you don't. You will not find DiEM25 brand on the." Uh, as a party to vote, uh, you will find uh, uh, DE uh, that I don't remember what the the acronym. Yeah, the brand of the yeah, uh, yeah the political so, party in Germany. Yeah, so a few you... of every uh, marketing campaign, you don't change the brand, the brand, but we did. <laughs> um, and on the other side, uh, nobody. Uh, outside uh, DM uh, is uh, believes we are not a party because if you run in elections, uh, uh, you can tell us uh, whatever, but uh, uh, you can tell it's uh, just a part of us, uh, it's, a, it, it's yeah. just one of our tools, but you are a party. But so, how many members in the DM, and how did you come to that confusing decision? Uh, well, we had uh, uh, six months of uh, discussion and uh, then uh, an all member vote that had uh, four options in it. Um, three were about uh, how to form uh, uh, national parties uh, and uh, to run in elections. And one was, uh, uh, one said, uh, no, we will not, uh, run in elections. And uh, the majority voted for uh, this uh, solution uh, that is to have both a party and a movement. And uh, um, very small minority uh, voted uh, against uh, having a party at all. But uh, uh, many people voted with their feet. Uh, so uh, many people just uh, got out of a DM uh, before this all member vote. Um, 
and how the direct democracy is correlated with the idea that uh, you have a majority vote. Is it, uh, is it, uh, um, what, what is, what is the uh, ideology behind that? Because if you were saying in the beginning that uh, uh, DM25 was found on the idea of direct democracy, and um, mm -hmm. if I'm correct now, you're describing kind of electoral politics inside of the party, where like oh. the people were discussing and the big numbers, then uh, majority vote, and then uh, the people just left uh, or just were ignored. Oh, they weren't ignored. Uh, they had, uh, uh, they could have voted. Um, it, it was their choice to mm -hmm. leave. Um, and I don't know if they left uh, before or after the vote. Um, the problem with uh, direct democracy is that this requires very small groups. And uh, uh, our effort is to have a, a direct democratic decision at a, an European level that uh, uh, should involve uh, uh, people from uh, uh, 28 countries and from all over the world because we have members uh, uh, that lives in uh, Brazil or uh, U USA or Australia. Um, even a candidate for the coordinating collective last summer was from, from Australia. And um, the main problem, it's uh, in my opinion, one of the most important issues with uh, the democracy and with direct democracy how do you get uh, decisions at a, a large scale? Um, mm. the, and uh, with people that has not uh, so much time at, its, uh, at his uh, disposal, um, because uh, discuss real democracy that uh, means uh, discussion, uh, deliberation, uh, informed deliberation, and uh, um, ideally not even a choice uh, and a vote, but reaching consensus requires an immense amount of time, even uh, if you are in a very small group. If you are a thousand and thousand of people, um, the best approximation to uh, direct democracy is to have uh, everybody discuss and vote and ideally mm -hmm. uh, contribute to form uh, the motions that are uh, put to vote. Um, but uh, you, can, you cannot have uh, both. So uh, actually, um, I told you I'm not totally against representative representative mm -hmm. democracy uh, this is the reason um, if you and this is something uh, I experienced in the social forum in uh, Bologna it was uh, totally direct uh, we had no uh, elected uh, directors uh, everybody was equal but at the end of the, of the day, literally, the decisions were taken by the three or four people that were able to stay until four in the night. And uh, so I, I was pregnant at that time uh, in uh, 2000, uh, in the year 2000. I think you too, your son is the same age uh, of mine. 2002, I was pregnant. <laughs> so um, I was pregnant and I had a job already. So I couldn't attend and after uh, 11, even midnight, but not later. So I did the cleverest uh, um, speech during our assemblies. 
I was very satisfied of myself, but it counted nothing because uh, uh, the real decisions are up to those who last uh, longer. And uh, this is the problem with not having a structure. So I, I know representative democracy has many biases. That's why I prefer uh, stochastic selection, randomly selection. Uh, but uh, I think uh, it's better than, uh, than nothing. Like, but isn't it connected to the purposes of what, um, um, what your, what, what decision make about? Like we would talk to Claire Farrell and he, she was describing Extinction Rebellion um, uh, decision-making process. And Extinction mm -hmm. Rebellion is an activist group who is, uh, uh, who is openly saying that their main purpose is a, they are going to conduct a civil disobedience. So they put in their bodies on the line and the things they discuss is um, basically how to break the law. In this case, to not have a consensus, and to, for example, if you vote, let's go to prison, you know, people who don't want to go to prison will just leave immediately, <laughs> you know? So you, so in this situation, it's, um, it's supposed to be a, a consensus. But for example, if you're a political party and you're trying to, or political lobby in this case, then probably you cannot do anything without uh, um, representative votes because uh, you need to you need to be kind of level with the rules of outside world. You know, if you're a sabatista who is living in uh, in Chiapas and you have all this communal structure and you have to deal with the government outside uh, who is actually attacking you physically then you have to have this long process of consensus because uh, they're talking about their own land and their own way of living. Uh, so it's, it's a very different situation. So would it be possible to say that uh, DEM25 was not only formed based on certain principles of uh, how to make decisions uh, or the abstract love to direct democracy, but also for certain purposes that then affect the way how the organization run? Would it be correct to say that? Um, well, Extinction Rebellion and DiEM are very different uh, in uh, one thing. Um, the, in Extinction, um, when you have the first meeting, um, you have a, a to people who explain you very well uh, where you are. Uh, that is uh, our task is uh, this uh, and this. Uh, we plan, we might plan to have uh, actions that uh, will uh, take you in a jail. So, uh, but, and you are free to decide whether you are, uh, you want or not uh to go in jail uh this uh, changes the kind of group uh, and role you will take in the group um but uh, the purpose and uh, uh, the way to reach it are already settled um extinction rebellion groups uh, are most uh, uh, likely to our uh, uh, DM spontaneous collectives. Uh, that is uh, our uh, group, uh, gr our grassroots, grassroots groups, um, whose task is uh, uh, just political activism. So mm -hmm. the decision there is just about how to. Um, push uh, on a, our agenda too, and uh, how to be a, a political activist. But uh, um, as a um, broader 
more comprehensive political organization that deals uh, um, at the same time with climate change, uh, borders, uh, and um, basic income, uh, and uh, public health, uh, and uh, everything, and tries to uh, make a coherent uh, discourse about it. We need uh, uh, political decisions uh, rightly about what do we think about uh, this or, the, uh, or that. Now uh, we are uh, um, working on a <clears throat> policy about feminism and diversity, for example. Um, mm -hmm. So our effort is to have uh, policies that are uh, uh, defined that are not defined from the start, like in extinction, mm -hmm. but uh, that are uh, designed by members. Um, I, I have not ended my exposition of the structure, actually, um, to write our policies. Mm -hmm. We have uh, um, a white paper structure uh, procedure that is uh, a group uh, suggests to have a policy, say, on feminism um, and writes a first draft of a proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, uh, this is discussed uh, uh, for a long time uh, through a, um, a working group that co uh, coordinates the debate and uh, all members can uh, take part in this discussion and uh, send suggestions uh, and amendments uh, to the first proposal. Then we have a second draft uh, that is published and uh, another round of discussions on this uh, second draft and then an all member vote. And this is why um, how we uh, approved uh, um, our uh, technological sovereignty uh, pillar, we call it policy. Mm -hmm. um, so the most important uh, uh, thing for which we, we need a decision-making process that is uh, uh, unique for the whole movement is uh, that we actually set policies in the making. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, that our goals uh, um, are not defined forever. Uh, mm -hmm. Our uh, uh, essential vision is uh, settled, but uh, the, uh, how to implement it and uh, this, uh, yes, Anke. Uh, are um, to be something that I probably missed from the beginning, how did, uh, how many members are there in M in DM25 and how were they, how did they come to be part? Can anyone join DM25? And then my second question was how then, once you have a working work in progress policy, how is it then um, practically pushed into the debates in, in different, because uh, they're all different contexts, right? In different countries. Um, yeah, how does it work practically? <laughs> Practically, um, until uh, uh, last last year, until first January of uh, this year, uh, membership was uh, actually free. That is, uh, you were supposed to pay uh, a fee of uh, sixty euros a year for uh, membership. But uh, if you deemed uh, it too much for uh, your uh, pocket, it could be 20 years, uh, 20 euros a year, or even nothing. And uh, um, so the vast majority of uh, members uh, uh, didn't pay anything. And uh, um, this as 
we had a, a decision uh, and a, on uh, all member vote on making uh, the fee uh, compel compelled compulsory and uh, so i don't know how many members uh, are left uh, now that uh, it is uh, paying i didn't check uh, i could but i didn't um, before this decision uh, before implementing this decision we were about uh, 140000 member um, but, wow. Uh, wow, that's a big budget too. Even if some of his people pay, that's a lot of money, huh? Yeah. If um, we must uh, still see how many of them uh, were just uh, uh, newsletter subscribers, that is, uh, uh, people who were interested in the end, but not uh, so much to be real members. As for uh, the uh, really active members, um, it is uh, uh, about, uh, it changed during the time, but it's uh, uh, about 10,000 uh, people um, with high, um, high variations. That is, uh, um, and uh, the real active members, uh, that is those uh, volunteering to do stuff, are some hundred of people. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we are, um, the countries where we are stronger are, uh, of course, Greece and uh, Germany. And uh, um, Italy is a strange situation because uh, it's mainly people focused uh, on uh, elections. And uh, I, yeah. I, I disagree on this, but uh, yes, one problem, another problem with uh, having electoral wings uh, is also that uh, unfortunately, uh, most of the uh, human beings um, in the world uh, think that the only way to make politics is to have uh, to run in elections. And so um, the electoral wing risks uh, to take to over uh, override the um, the movement in many occasions. Yeah, I, I just want to return to the Anka's question about uh, practicalities of how this looks like a very complex international structure, and uh, it's really fascinating that you trying to make policy while uh, while you go so how is it actually working when you have like a uh, so many countries different languages uh, thousands of members and you have to come up with the policy on feminism which is a controversial subject yeah in some countries such as the catholic countries and uh, you know some is super liberal it's identity politics and so on so forth so many um you know, could be so many disagreements. I'm actually interested to join myself to be part of this working group to see how it's uh, how it goes. <laughs> um, well, um, I forgot. So, sorry, Anka, I forgot to answer the second part of your uh, question. Uh, we have a forum, um, very sometimes uh, very hated uh, with very heated discussions, and uh, uh, it works mainly in English. That was, that's why I was obliged to learn this awful language. <laughs> I, I want everybody to speak French. <laughs> um, and uh, But yes, um, inside the forum, we have uh, national uh, um, threads and national forum, but uh, always open to everybody. Uh, there is no distinction uh, when you subscribe. Um, you, you may or you may not, uh, it's your choice to uh, tell uh, I'm Italian uh, uh, or, uh, or uh, not. And uh, so there is no distinction uh, 
uh, any distinction uh, among members uh, following where they do live or uh, their nationality. And actually, the vast majority of members I met are uh, uh, people that is born in one country and lives in another. And um, th this is quite natural for a movement like ours. And uh, uh, so the forum is uh, uh, the most interesting discussions are in English. Uh, but uh, you can have uh, a discussion in your language. You are uh, highly encouraged to uh, to write posts in your language and uh, to provide a translation when you, you deem it uh, important for the whole movement. And uh, <clears throat> um, another uh, part of the structure is uh, uh, thematic DSCs, thematic DM spontaneous collectives, and uh, uh, task forces. Um, thematic uh, DSCs, DM spontaneous collectives, uh, were born as uh, local groups of activists to, to be active in, uh, in a town, uh, in the place where they live. Um, in time, uh, we decided to have also uh, transnational thematic DSCs. Uh, as an example, I'm a member of the Deliberative Democracy DSC that uh, makes some uh, very interesting stuff. And I'll send you the link uh, to the YouTube uh, records of uh, some of uh, our meetings. And uh, um, the Public Health uh, DSC, and uh, I'm a member of the uh, feminist, uh, Feminism and Diversity Task Force. A task force is uh, uh, different from a DSC in, in this, that a DSC is uh, totally free. Uh, you have uh, uh, four friends who want to work on uh, a project, just like a, a room in the Museum of Care and uh, they tell to the staff, uh, hey, we want to make a DSC on uh, uh, decision-making uh, process. And uh, uh, the, the group is formed and they do everything they want, mm -hmm. uh, provided that, that they don't pretend to represent DM in uh, what they they do or say, uh, they just just can say uh, the M policy is uh, this one and this other one because we uh, voted on these uh, policies, but they cannot take decisions on their own. Um, and uh, instead, the task forces are established with an all-member vote. Um, and uh, uh, some member of the coordinating, coordinating collective must be there. And they actually can make policies, but uh, it's still uh, um, the same process, white paper process I described uh, uh, later. Uh, before, sorry, uh, that is uh, um, the task force uh, uh, makes a proposal. In this moment, the task force uh, is making a proposal uh, for changes in the manifesto, in the end manifesto. Um, and this proposal passes through uh, the a decision of the coordinating collective, and uh, uh, then it's put to an all member vote. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, yes, the only thing I didn't talk about uh, until now is the most important of all, that is the coordinating collective. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, 
the coordinating collective is a, a, a partly elected board that is uh, uh, 12 members of the coordinating collective are elected through an all member vote um, that is made yearly, uh, but only half of the collective uh, um, goes under um, election every year. So the stance uh, is uh, two years usually. So I was elected in 2019. And uh, if uh, my stance, my stay will end uh, in August uh, this year. And uh, if I want, I can run for another ter term, but if I, I must run for, for if I want to have an, another term. And uh, um, the, um, but the coordinating collective also includes uh, uh, the, uh, the founder father, fathers of the movement. Um, that is uh, uh, eight members now um, that are there not because they are elected, but uh, ex officio, we call them. That is uh, because they uh, cover, they have a role in the staff, and they uh, they represent the continuity of the uh, organization. Um, so, actually, the board is uh, um, twenty people, and uh, uh, when somebody is hired to hold uh, uh, an important position, like uh, as an example, uh, the uh, Green New Deal uh, for Europe uh, coordinator or the uh, policy coordinator that used to be David Adler. Um, this position uh, entails uh, um, coordinating collective membership. What does uh, mean sense uh, supposed to be somebody from this uh, coordination committee. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I didn't understand the verb. Intent. This position should be what? Uh, they, they should be approved by the core group or what? Um, the, for example, the position uh, David Adler um, left the coordinating collective and the role of a policy coordinator because. Uh, he, um, he took the same role in the Progressive International. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and uh, uh, Pavel Vargan, that was the uh, GNDA coordinator, also left uh, to take this role. So we had uh, two ex officio members that left and uh, um, we have no, now hired people to cover this position. And uh, uh, the hiring uh, went through a, a classical, classical pro process of selection that is uh, uh, curricula and uh, mm -hmm. uh, auditions uh, and so on. And then uh, the um, the group that ran the auditions uh, uh, suggested a person to the whole co uh, coordinating collection collective as a whole. And uh, uh, this uh, position was approved. So now we have uh, new people for these uh, positions. Um, so there is a page, page person, a page staff also founding fathers and people who elected and who is a volunteer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is the, how much, how much of each in this, among these 20 people? Uh, 12 elected members mm -hmm. and uh, eight uh, um, hired uh, members. But uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, 
uh, two elected members are also members of the hired staff. Mm -hmm. And uh, who decides that? Who will go, who will work for free and who will get paid? Uh, there are two different uh, processes. Um, who, who goes, uh, you can be uh, uh, just an elected member like me, or you can be um, a person hired for an important role, and uh, you can be both. That mm. is uh, um, um, Eric Edman, that is the uh, main uh, uh, political coordinator, uh, the one that really makes things uh, uh, work in the movement, is an elected member and an hired member. Mm -hmm. um, this engenders uh, a bit of confusion uh, mm -hmm. in, in my personal opinion. Uh, and uh, uh, some, um, some lack of equilibrium because uh, uh, of course, uh, Eric was, uh, works uh, uh, very hard for the movement. I, I think he works uh, 20 hours uh, a day or uh, um, 10 hours uh, for sure a day as uh, uh, a lot of time at disposal and energies, much more than me that have uh, another job uh, and uh, but that have another job, that's all. Um, so his knowledge of uh, what's going on uh, of, the, of the people in the movement, uh, of uh, how it works, uh, how what's going on uh, uh, in synthesis is uh, uh, ten, 10 times mine because he has 10 times um, my time for... Uh, to work for the movement and uh, so when it comes for to decisions uh, um, it, this is a, a weight this has a weight um harry the may uh, wrote something in the chat yeah i can you, you can i can read it uh it's from uh mariana uh after reading the manifesto or maybe mariana can read it yourself Mariana, you can you you have a sound? Hello? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> okay. okay, so I uh, after reading the manifesto of democrat democratizing Europe, I was wondering if you could discuss the philosophical roots that inspired you personally and them 25. Um yeah, and then maybe first question and then the second question is about uh, a very interesting i also like really interesting to know if it's possible to learn more about spinoza's frame from your perspective <sighs> well um philosophical roots of uh, of them uh, to me it has uh it's a difficult question because uh, I don't consider it so much philosophical, like, but quite obvious. Um, but yes, I can answer both questions. Um, Spinoza, um, the core of Spinoza's philosophy is the idea of a. a Conatus, that is uh, the um, Deleuze translated it as a desire. Um, it, it's quite difficult to translate. Um, in Latin, Conatus uh, means uh, strive. And uh, uh, Spinoza says uh, uh, the essence of any, any being is a uh, it's strive to be a sort of inertia. Mm -hmm. um, the difficulty is that this striving is not a strive toward 
some uh, something some end um, actually the um, many uh, Spinoza scholars um, uh, Machere uh, for example um, and Deleuze too uh, were interested in Spinoza because uh, uh, it reversed the idea of uh, finalism uh, finalism means uh, um, there is an ideal of a man um, and uh, a man uh, is accomplished when it uh, uh, fulfills of all of its uh, potentialities. Um, this means uh, there is a, a direction to uh, with which you should go and uh, um, and you can uh, or cannot uh, fulfill what you should be. There is a, a model uh, that actually uh, usually is the uh, rational male uh, adult uh, man. Um, with the idea of Conatus, uh, um, Spinoza uh, talks uh, instead of pot potentiality. Um, his idea of the man is uh, of every uh, being, not you, not only man. Actually, there is no clear distinction between uh, uh, human beings uh, or uh, uh, any kind of being, even a stone. And there is a an hidden quotation of uh, Spinoza uh, from uh, Giordano Bruno that is uh, um, all beings are uh, um, animated, even a stone in his way, in its way is animated because uh, all beings are expression of the um, creative uh, force of the universe, of God. Um, uh, God in Spinoza is uh, uh, just everything that exists and uh, uh, an infinite uh, creative uh, uh, substance being and uh, everything that exists is just uh, one of the infinite uh, modes, ways, uh, this uh, infinite uh, creativity expresses itself. So there is no borders between, uh, not, no real borders between uh, beings and uh, everyone is an expression of this uh, uh, creativity. So to get, go back to uh, men and politics, um, when Spinoza says uh, uh, the essence of uh, any being is, is uh, conatus, he says uh, it's, is, uh, it's creativity, is uh, being uh, an expression of the infinite creativity of the universe. And uh, um, his uh, potential uh, is um, uh, potentia, pot potentia, uh, says uh, Spinoza, is uh, power. Uh, power means uh, strength, uh, creative uh, ability, ability to know and to, to be. And uh, um, in this creativity, there is no real distinction uh, between the body and uh, the thought. Um, the, both of them are uh, just reflection. So there is no um, command of the mind over the body, but instead uh, um, the more things a body is able to do, the more things uh, a mind is able to know. 
knowledge and uh, uh, behavior and uh, creativity uh, still are the same thing seen on uh, uh, two different perspectives. Um, on the political point of view, this makes uh, uh, Spinoza understand uh, uh, people as uh, power. Uh, he, in his uh, political treatise, he creates uh, a physics of power. He uh, treats, uh, for example, monarchy as uh, an imbalance of power, uh, saying uh, um, a one single person, a king, will never be able to stand uh, the power of the multitude of his uh, subjects. So uh, it is a monarchy is simple, not true. It cannot exist. It will ever be an aristocracy because the king will ever need uh, somebody uh, to help him. And uh, uh, so the, the only real uh, political form that exists is uh, aristocracy or oligarchy. And uh, um, what the goal um, that uh, and democracy is uh, actually the um, reliquo desiderantur. The rest la, uh, is uh, missing. Uh, Spinoza died before writing the uh, chapter on democracy of his uh, politi politi political treatise. Um, so we don't know what he would have uh, said, but, uh, uh, and actually the, the very interest of this uh, book is uh, uh, this physics of uh, politics. And he, um, in this way, he also inter understands the um, idea of, uh, of power and of uh, sovereignty um, and uh, of uh, natural rights. Um, but I'm, I'm getting very long. I don't know if you are still interested. That's so cool. Yeah, but yeah. probably it's for uh, like uh, uh, maybe some other longer conversation. Yeah, because- I, I'll it's, try it's to start to cut it uh, the shorter, as short as I can. Um, everybody is a, a power and uh, uh, our natural rights are our power, our uh, strength. And uh, the whole problem with politics is how do you manage to unite, unite this strength. Mm -hmm. um, collective uh, uh, power, is, uh, uh, of course, most, more uh, strong, strong than individual power. And uh, um, Spinoza focuses on how do you get collective power without uh, having domination. Mm. Um, but, and he says, uh, you are more free in a state where you have a collective power than uh, when you are alone. And uh, um, actually, this is uh, uh, my personal objection to anarchism, um, to raw anarchism. Then there are many forms of uh, anarchism. And, uh, in some of the, the meanings, I am an anarchist, but I want uh, collective action because I don't believe I can be free. Uh, I, I don't believe I'm free when I'm alone. 
and uh, to have a, a collective action um, you need organization you need rules you need uh, rules about decision making or you will at the end of the day it will be the most uh, lasting people who decide and uh, um, when it comes to uh, very uh, numerous group or widespread group when it comes to millions of people uh, that need to decide uh, what to do in a in a place i don't say country on purpose um, you need some form uh, of decision making decision making that involves some form of representation i think the best form of representation is a random selection because of the biases I see in uh, selection. Uh, nevertheless, I think uh, some form of uh, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we cannot spend all of our time deciding and uh, even if we did, um, we couldn't make uh, uh, strong decisions on a wide level. That is uh, the one we need uh, in a globalized world. In this moment, we need uh, decisions that involve uh, the whole humanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you cannot take them alone or without a uh, structure. I'm, I'll be quiet. <laughs> yes, Nika. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that's wonderful. So I just uh, wanted to the end uh, of uh, this discussion about decision making uh, to compare with uh, what we're going through now in Museum of Care. And so my current understanding is um, uh, as uh, we were comparing the DM25 of Extinction Rebellion, maybe we can compare it with the uh, mission statement of um, Museum of Care, uh, mm -hmm. is uh, that uh, uh, my understanding is like uh, Extension Rebellion is a strictly activist group who must have consensus uh, and they also have to have this non hierarchical structure because their, their aim is a, a very specific, uh, in a way, militant organization, militant lobbying organization that's supposed to push power very quickly for all of us <laughs> to change the laws. So they have to be open to anybody, horizontal, and um, have to have consensus. And that's what they do. They have a lot of problems because of that, but uh, they have a difficult task to achieve. So DM25, if I understood you correctly, is, um, is a political movement that is, uh, in a way, doing very similar things to Extinction Rebellion, but they are not, uh, uh, you know, like a free riders, uh, artists and uh, street uh, demonstrations, you guys go into the parliaments, you speak to the government officials. Uh, and so you have to, by doing that, you have to have a different tools to unlock the system because you wanted to, to pass policies, you know, you have to, you have to create paperwork uh, and so on and so forth. And so it looks like you developed a different set of tools compared to Extinction Rebellion that allow you to achieve or somehow achieve these goals. Uh, and of course, everybody has their own problems, but it's clear that if you would act as uh, Extinction Rebellion, you would achieve nothing because, you know, you cannot come to the parliament, 10,000 people and glue yourself to the, um, to the door. Uh, and then it's not a discussion about how we change laws. It's like a push uh like very very big push for the tremendous change uh and so museum of k in this case none of those uh it's not the um, it doesn't want politician to change their laws uh we 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 kind of not in that position uh we also uh not going we're not we're not set up to to change any political activist action uh, some of us may sympathize with uh, some of the people or movements, but it's uh, individual um, kind of um, gestures 
uh, Museum of Care was born as the uh, uh, framework for <laughs> what you were describing in, uh, um, in uh, Spinoza, you know, for this mm -hmm. creativity to be unleashed without any political implications. So ideally, Museum of Care should be radical enough to, to provide space for the people from the different political views than their organizers until these people will try to take over and impose their political views on, on us. Because uh, it's a different way of, um, like what we're talking in Museum of Care, this collective art projects and uh, public art and, you know, uh, uh, building a relationship is outside of the realm and vocabulary of um, both political lobby and direct political actions. Uh, but uh, I would be also very interested in to, maybe not now, because we're running out of time, but in some, maybe we have other conversation, if you can describe more this uh, spontaneous movement on DM 25 because it looks like uh, this is where like the Museum of K is much more, um, uh similar to and i was even thinking maybe we can not join the dem 25 but create a collaborative relationship and kind of have a mutual help to each other because that's the people who looks like um already was in the process long before museum of care was born to develop certain skills that could be useful for us as well well you could uh, you could not actually join uh Actually, um, well, the I'm not sure I understood the question. <laughs> I just want you to, to say your, your opinion about Museum of Care uh, mm. uh, in, a, in this context that we defined, you know, DEM 25 that you explained so yeah. and well, uh, better. I think the DSC and the uh, thematic DSC's structure is much like uh, uh, what uh, Museum of Care um, aims to be. Um, I must be sincere. I I love Museum of Care, but I'm not sure I understand. Uh, I totally understand what it is. Um, as far as I understand, um, it's some. Uh, um, not so much related uh, projects. The relation, the connection among projects is uh, the museum assembly. Um, but it's uh, it's just rooms uh, that where uh, you can uh, uh, start a project uh, of your own. Uh, so I don't understand. I still don't understand. Um, I think, uh, well, of course, uh, uh, you are um, heartily invited to join. And uh, I mean, just to see how it works. Um, oh, there is much conflict inside. And uh, um, we also a, a very interesting structure we have uh, is a conflict mediation group. Um, um, that is the most advanced uh, pro project we have, in, in my opinion. And uh, uh, what we don't have, uh, and we should, in my opinion, is uh, um, a way to uh, to make the movement a uh, work in progress. That is uh, to change our previous decisions uh, quickly when and to assess our previous uh, decisions. Um, we started with Brian Eno saying, uh, um, uh, the receipt, let's start cooking, the receipt will come. Um, an Italian found for us cooking is sacred and it, I find it, um, <laughs> ominous, <laughs> but uh, um, it has some reason uh, that is a DM um, is or should have been something that is make is made in the making. 
in the process. And uh, this means uh, you do, you uh, undo, you do again, you, you try, uh, you fail, you do again. And uh, the failure is uh, very important for um, an organization like ours. And I think for a museum too. Um, failure is precious and conflict is precious. Uh, it uh, tells you that um, at least that there is another possibility. Maybe this is not the best uh, possibility to explore, but conflict says tells you uh, you need change. Uh, the way to uh, fail, assess your failures and change is uh, uh, vital, in my opinion, for uh, all our endeavors. Yeah, and, uh, just want to quickly ask, uh, ooh, okay, just want to quickly answer for the comment about Museum of Care because, and then, yeah, uh, so it's just like, um, if we, ha we already have plenty of uh, big organizations and big movements who has a specific goals and we have an, uh, you know, we want to change this policy, we want to change that policy, we want to be democratic and so on and so forth. So, we, and we have the art world and the whole, you know, universe of academia where the individual people are trying to achieve their creativity as you were talking about Spinoza. So let's say Museum of Care is this attempt where you can, uh, be free, playful, and creative without being political movements and without being like direct um, uh, targeted on a certain agenda, like climate change or, you know, whatever else uh, targeted you are. Because most of the people would never be members of political movements, you know, we are not. Uh, but we do have our lives as an artist or philosophers or writers or filmmakers and so on and so forth. And we are like a very big part of population. And even people who is not professionally artists, of course, have the artistic practices. That was the idea of Proletkult, that was 10 times bigger than Bolshevik party, yeah? Because they didn't assign people to, in the beginning, <laughs> then Stalin assigned them. They didn't assign people to, um, you know, to do this and that. They said they provide them with space to be creative. And that has like a enormous uh, potential. And that's, as I was saying on this reading group about the, another art world, after Soviet Union collapse, we still have the structures. Funny enough, the structures uh, turn out to be so strong exactly because they, they were not um, instrumentalized by any political movements like in the core. Uh, so that's, that's the major thing. Sanka, I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no, uh, on the contrary. Anka, uh, you had your... Yeah, I, I was just um, thinking about how you, at some point, you mentioned about um, people should have informed, you know, doing the, the difference between taking decisions and informed decisions. And, mm -hmm. um, and I was just thinking about our reading group and you talking about, it's so fascinating hearing you talk about Spinoza. If you could um, maybe suggest a text for us to discuss on Spinoza, something that, and again, I'm just thinking uh, about so far, the reading groups tend to be like very, it somehow has a very quite an academic tone. Um, so maybe something that it's accessible that you can think of. Um, but that's not for now, no, you know, if you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would say the, the ethics, but the ethics is not an easy reading. Um, but uh, people can try, and uh, well, I can provide some uh, guidance uh, in the in the forest. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah uh, Anka wrote creativ creativity, but not as a fi finality. Um, well, what I was trying to say is. Uh, Exactly the contrary. That is, uh, creativity uh, is the finality. Uh, the um, there, but without finalism, that is, uh, um, there is no goal already 
established. Uh, it, it is really open and uh, but make everybody uh, in allow everybody to create to be be creative is uh, the philosophical ethical political goal for me at least um, the my idea of god of good is uh, whatever allows as many people uh, as possible to be uh, as creative as they can. And um, Spinoza said, uh, um, it is part of my personal happiness that um, everybody around me is uh, happy and uh, creative, uh, shares uh, my, uh, it, it calls it my knowledge of God. Um, because Spinoza says, of course, uh, God is knowledge, uh, knowledge I will. Uh, I can write it, but I cannot pronounce it. <laughs> um, you, you can know God. And this is a heresy for uh, Christianism and uh, Hebra Hebraism. Uh, uh, and uh, all um, monotheistic religions. Uh, you can know God, actually you are God. Tatva uh, Masi. You are God. Uh, in, in that you are an expression of God's creativity. Okay, so, sorry for the uh, notice. Yeah. Yeah, so we should definitely do a reading group on Spinoza. Okay, uh -huh. so I will just stop recording now, wait. Uh...